Hi, and welcome to EV Charging in Strata, an update from 2021. So there are three basic EV charger technologies that are going into our Strata apartment buildings. You've got uh, 10 amp charging adapters that plug into general power outlets. Uh, then we'll talk about standard chargers, um, which are often also called smart chargers. And then at level three, DC fast chargers, which are quite expensive and won't go into most of our apartment buildings. So there's a plethora of EV charger suppliers on the market. Uh, there are companies that do infrastructure upgrades. There are EV charger manufacturers. And then you've got uh, the local EV charging solution providers who often import these um, charge stations into Australia and coordinate local electricians to install them into apartment blocks. Uh, you also have billing and rental uh, companies uh, and uh, companies providing ongoing support. Some of the prerequisite projects for EV charging installation are, you might conduct a survey inside your apartment building of the residents that are interested in purchasing an EV over the next 10 years. You might want to uh, do some research or engage a consultant to look at the maximum loads and planning out a roadmap for EV charging in your building to go in the Capital Works Fund over the next 10 years. And you might want to also pass an EV charging bylaw, which uh, might uh, in involve engaging your strata lawyer. What we're going to do, we're going to have a look at a couple of buildings around the city that have had different approaches to preparing for EV charging in the apartment blocks. So first we'll have a look at the Regency model. And this building uh, had some high-end vehicles that needed trickle charging. So they actually installed uh, some dedicated uh, general power outlets that could actually measure the amount of trickle charge that goes into each of these high-end vehicles. And by that, some Porsche, uh, Maserati, et cetera. So uh, that trickle charging is just happening at 10 amps from a special GPO. You can get this from uh, a local hardware store. We jump over to 6 Maclay Street in Potts Point. Uh, this is a building made famous by Tesla Model S enthusiast, Mark Maloko. And he was one of the first pioneers to uh, go through the, the process of getting a, a strata building to approve him charging his Tesla Model S in the car park area. And uh, this was an example of unmanaged charging on an individual apartment meter on the main switchboard. Then if we jump over to Parama Wharf in Piermont, uh, here we have an example of unmanaged charging on an individual apartment meter board on an apartment meter board. So that's a meter board that only has apartment meters on it. Uh, and uh, at this building, uh, a new 50 amp breaker was installed and you can see the Tesla charge station was just put on a pylon near the car and conduit was installed. This was with approval of the Strata Committee and the building and facilities manager also put in place a uh, document that had to be uh, signed off by each resident that wants to install an EV charging station, including things like um, uh, the owner of the EV being responsible for checking the RCDs on, an, on a periodic basis if required by law. Then if we jump over to Observatory Tower. So this was one of the buildings that first uh, looked at whole of building EV charging ready model uh, back in 2017. And uh, for five levels of basement car park, you're looking at something like half a million dollars of infrastructure, uh, cable trays through five levels of basement car park, dedicated uh, distribution boards on each level of the car park just for EV charging, and also a new uh, Osgrid link from uh, the nearest substation. So uh, this uh, is basically the penultimate um, EV charging infrastructure uh, design. Um, it hasn't moved forward yet, but it's uh, something that is basically what every other building can think about. It might be something that you might get to over the course of 10 or 15 or 20 years. 
Uh, then if we jump over to Infinity Cove uh, up in Lane Cove, this was a new development. Uh, the developer Urbancom offered uh, 10 apartments to be bought off the plan with an EV charger installed. And then they were flooded with interest and they extended this to 40 EV charge stations. So uh, using a uh, controller hub and load balance smart chargers, um, uh, they installed 40 electric vehicle charge stations in this building. Uh, to my knowledge, this is still the largest number of smart chargers in any building in Australia. And it follows something that was done uh, in the Salesforce building in San Francisco about four years ago. So um, this is, uh, you know, basically each smart charger being uh, interconnected and also uh, having a mobile phone app for payment so that there's no issuing of uh, uh, swipe cards or fobs um, to do charging in the building. Then if we move over to Meadowbank, uh, we've got the Genesis model. So this building featured an embedded network and a 30 kilowatt solar system. And the Strata Committee voted to install an EV charger connected off the common area meter, which is connected off the gate meter of the embedded network, which also gets a feed from the 30 kilowatt solar system on the roof. So this is an example of solar powered EV charging in a residential Strata building. Once again, you've got a smart charger there and mobile phone app for uh, payment. So uh, no need to issue um, dedicated swipe cards to uh, residents or visitors who want to charge at this building. And that model was repeated again uh, at Botanic, which is a build to rent in uh, uh, Top Ride, opposite Top Ride Shopping Centre. If we jump over to Harbour Lights in Milsons Point, uh, here's a building that's uh, preparing for EV charging by installing a real-time electricity monitoring device on the common area meter. And uh, this gives them five-minute updates of the load, which helps in terms of them planning out an EV charging roadmap for the future. Uh, we move over to the Horizon uh, building in uh, King's Cross. Uh, they converted two visitor car parking spaces, which had bollards um, with a dual EV charger. So uh, two vehicles can charge at the same time here. Um, uh, there's a booking system that's used to reserve the charging spots and uh, payment is managed behind the scenes. So there's no impact on the facilities manager or strata manager in order to collect payment um, for a user pays system. Then if we move over to uh, the Waratah building also in Potts Point, um, here's an example of using um, a locally developed load balancing system uh, that can load balance across six EVs. Um, so you've got, uh, the idea is you can plug in any charger of your um, choice, uh, connect it through the control system and it will manage uh, scheduling and ensure that you don't overload the peak capacity of the building. Then we jump to the Richmond model uh, over in Piedmont. Uh, the secretary of this building is Dale Cohen, uh, who's been a long-term uh, EV enthusiast, first having a Mitsubishi Outlander and now a Tesla Model S. And he's been pioneering a solution in this building that will allow uh, Wi-Fi connectivity to a bank of EV chargers in the basement car park with over-the-air updates that will um, move towards open charge point protocol um, compliance and also uh, use of uh, electricity monitoring devices on dedicated distribution boards um, because this building doesn't have uh, a building management system that gives real-time electricity monitoring data. So looking at a, um, a shorter term solution of converting four of the 12 visitor car parking spots that already have bollards and a booking system to EV charging um, enabled spots, and then also um, phasing in through the 10 year capital works plan, the uh, infrastructure required to enable EV readiness in uh, all 105 car spaces. So some of the learnings and experiences that we've had um, at other buildings, um, 
GPOs are not a favorable um, long-term or even medium-term option. People do want to be pro um, charging in their own private car space, but if you can do a visitor, uh, a controlled visitor car space rollout with bollards and booking system, uh, this can work for the initial users of EVs in the building. Um, uh, our strata buildings want reputable, experienced and financially sound EV charging installers and EV charging product manufacturers. Um, the feedback we're getting is very few strata uh, owners corporations are going to spend the large amounts of money like the observatory tower model first up. So it's about phasing in uh, over the next 10, 15, 20 years uh, and preparing in the capital works plan what you're going to do in the next uh, 10 years um, to gradually move towards an EV readiness model for the building, keeping in mind that a percentage of the building might actually end up being hydrogen powered cars. Not everyone will be electric uh, in 20 years time. So incremental solutions, um, ability to charge premium rents. And in fact, um, there are buildings where um, a renter with a Tesla Model X has decided not to rent in the building because he wasn't going to be allowed to charge in the building. Um, a high need for automatic billing services that doesn't impact facilities managers, strata committee members or strata managers. And there's a uh, concern about support and extensibility over time. So the solutions that can take over the air updates um, or other forms of updates to the hardware and improve the, uh, the capabilities of the internal charging network over time, um, there's a strong desire for our systems that are able to uh, provide this. So um, also EV charging roadmaps need to take into account open charge point protocol, EV car share, solar and batteries. So the future of EV charging in buildings in Sydney, we've got um, a bunch of um, off the plan and new developments such as uh, Infinity Cove, Botanic, Landmark, um, the Indigo project at Sydney Olympic Park that are being built with EV charging. And uh, for retrofitting uh, EV charging in existing buildings, um, more people will be buying the EVs in the next three to five years. So, you know, there are a couple of hundred apartment buildings that are preparing for EV charging out of, uh, you know, 160,000 uh, strata schemes in New South Wales at the moment. So the future of EV charging in buildings, um, uh, you know, the, the beauty of moving to open charge point protocol will be, we'll have something akin to the mobile phone network where someone with an Android phone uh, can make a phone call to someone with an Apple phone. And uh, over time, we'll get to that with uh, different uh, models of load balance smart charging systems being able to cooperate in a network with each other. Uh, when it comes to EV car share, um, it's now possible to get uh, uh, Hyundai Konas or even te Tesla Model uh, 3s as dedicated EV car shares uh, in an apartment building, but you probably don't want to explore this unless you've got at least 100 lots. Uh, vehicle to grid uh, with the Nissan uh, LEAF is now something that's being trialled in Australia. And as we mentioned earlier, solar and battery powered EV charging is coming to our apartment blocks. So thanks so much. If you've got any questions, just leave them in the comments box below and I hope you've enjoyed EV charging in Strata 2021 update. Thank you.